So let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've covered uh, types of data. I'll be sharing these presentations with you by the end of the day, along with the practice files that we have discussed. Now, so we have covered the first question of the measure phase, which is uh, what to measure. Okay. Now we are getting into the next question, which is how to measure. It is, uh, it is very, very important for us to look at that what sort of data uh, we are going to analyze because sometimes we get a humongous sort of data and it is not really possible to work on the entire data. And therefore, uh, we, we talk about sampling. And I'm sure you must have heard about sampling or sampling sample size uh, previously. But we will, we will talk about in detail that what are the different types of sampling that we have, uh, which sampling time is the, which sampling type is the most effective sort of sampling type. How do we get to the right sample size and how do we uh, do the sampling? So these all questions which are coming in your mind uh, that what is the use of sampling? What is the correct sample size? What is the technique to do the sampling? Uh, this is something which we will talk about next. Okay. So first talk about types of sampling. Okay. Uh, first type of sampling is called a random sampling. In random sampling, uh, when we are doing sampling, we don't consider in, in such a way wherein we give uh, any systematic or any, any sort of sampling. We pick any sort of number which comes our way. Okay. Either it could be the first, third, fifth, seventh, whatever we want. Uh, so that's what we do it with the help of sampling. So first of all, um, even before we get into the types of sampling, I just want to ask you a question. And why do you think sampling is required? Why can't we work on the entire population or entire data set that we have? Uh, so collecting the data for the entire population can be um, can not necessarily be feasible. Economically, it cannot be feasible sometimes and for okay. various other operational reasons also. So it is always so, better to go for a sample. So economically also, it is not viable. Uh, it takes a lot of time as well. It's operationally not possible as well. Okay. And also a sample of the uh, data can be a representative of the entire population. So yeah. you don't need to spend the effort to go yeah. to the entire population. Absolutely. That is why sampling size is very, very important. Absolutely. So one very good thing that we talk about or very effective thing that we talk about is that sampling represents the entire population. And therefore sampling is a good method. So for example, when you, when, when, when we look at the, uh, by elections or when we look at the election polls that we come into place, wherein we know that we have a population of 1.3 billion. Okay. But these people comes up with the sampling and comes not exactly, but yes, uh, to some extent, uh, whether the sample and populations are very, very near to each other. Okay. So sampling uh, is very, very effective. Uh, why it is, why it is required is, and, and have you all answered it? It's very, very, uh, very, very time consuming and a lot of consume a lot of time. So uh, just to, uh, just to make you understand uh, with one example that I want to take, so for example, if I'm, if I'm trying to uh, design a new shoe and, um, and I want to know the taste of the people to, to understand what is the look and feel of the shoe that they are looking at. So I designed a kind of a questioner uh, so that I can take person's opinion and basis those basis people opinion, I will be able to uh, make that shoe. Okay. So now the population that I have like if I take an example of one, one particular state, let's say take, let's take an example of Maharashtra. Okay. We know the population is around 1.5 crores. So in 1.5 crores, if I want to check with each and everybody, it's going to take ages. It's going to take a lot of time and it's, it's going to uh, take a uh, lot of time and patience. And by the time, if I complete the population, I might not require this. Okay. Maybe then the demand changes and I don't, I don't want it. So that's why sampling is very much required, but we need to ensure that the mean of the sample should be very, very close to the population mean. Mean of the sample should be very, very close to the popular, uh, population mean. How close, that is something which we're going to talk about uh, in the sampling exercise. 
Okay. So that is what sampling is. That's why sampling is required. Now we will talk about different types of sampling. So I was talking about random sampling, random sampling in, in such a way that each and every sample in a given population has an equal chance of getting picked. Okay. No matter whether it is for one particular region, one for particular product, one particular team, everything can be looked at. So that is called a random sampling. Uh, some of the benefits of random sampling, it's very unbiased because uh, we are not giving any any sort of uh, consideration to any group. It is a real representation of the population. It is very simple and economical, okay? But it is not very viable because it could be a possibility, let's say if I'm doing a population, uh, or if I'm doing a sampling of one particular business unit and I want to come, come up to a sample, if I do a random sample, it could be possible that I consider the sampling of only one particular team or one particular shift, or maybe one particular product, you know, I have not taken others into consideration. So that's why random sampling is not very, very effective. And we have huge data stratification, a lot of different types of data that we have different, different uh, data points that we have. So therefore in that particular case, we have, we will not consider the random sampling because in that case we have just randomized it but not considered that we have taken people or popul or sample from each and every department, units, products, geographical regions, shifts, etc. Et okay. Second type of sampling is known as systematic sampling. In systematic sampling, it is often used as a uh, when are we when we giving any sort of sequence, okay? Sequence to a, a sample. Like if I if I have a data in front of me, and I have uh, given a logic that I would pick every tenth data. So first I'll pick first, then I'll pick eleventh, twenty first, thirty first, forty second, etc. So given a, I've given an n name selection technique. I can give anything as per my convenience. But that is what systematic sampling is, wherein I am giving a systematic sort of logic that I'll be doing this side of sampling. Uh, this type of sampling is not very effective as well because uh, I'm not considering each and every. Uh, again, I said the stratification that we have in the data. I'm just doing a systematic sampling. So this is something we've already covered. The third type of sampling is a convenience sample. What is convenience sampling? Convenience sampling is done when I am doing sampling as per my convenience. Okay. Sometimes, someday, I, if I say that I will do sample for this particular uh, department, and someday I say I can take sampling from this particular. So it is my own convenience as per my convenience, and I'm being biased sometimes also. Uh, that's why I'm doing the convenience sampling. Okay. This is also not very convenient in terms of uh, coming up to a right sample size and uh, right sample size. Uh, so therefore, convenient sampling is also not very effective to talk about. Sivapreet, uh, just one question. So this uh, convenient sampling is a non-probability sampling now? Yes. Convenient sampling is basically the sampling that I'm doing it as per my convenience. I, I do not look at any of the constraints. I don't look at any of the criteria. So today I think I should take 10 sample from this particular uh, area and 20 from this particular area. So I'm not using any sort of logic, any sort of randomness, any sort of systematic. It is as per me only. Okay. And why I mentioned it in the slide, because there are some, some teams that will, will do the convenient sampling and uh, they should not do it. So that's what. Uh, okay. Got it. Got it. About. The most effective sort of sampling is known as quota sampling. Uh, however, there is another layer to it, which we'll talk about. Quota sampling basically talks about we identify these stratums and their proportion, which they are representing in the population. And basis that we do the quota sampling. So let's take an example here. I will just take an example of the quota sampling here. 